If you would like to identify trees here in India, this is the video for you. Hi guys, I'm Shashank Birla, a naturalist and photojournalist and since I'm still very much a student in this area, I'm going to need the help of a few companions to navigate this journey. One of course is the World Wide Web, the website Flowers of India, as well as this book right here. Jungle Trees of Central India by Pradeep Krishan. This is one of the most wonderful field guides that I really, really recommend that you should go through in case you'd like to learn more about the trees that are found in the jungles of India. I'll be leaving a link to all those sources that I just mentioned in the description below. Now, we did talk about a few of the trees which are found in the Pench Tiger Reserve, which is present in the states of Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh. So you can check out that previous video as well, but don't worry about it. You can continue with this video where we'll be discussing a few more of the trees that are actually found here. As always, if you have any questions, comments, corrections, anything you'd like to discuss, please do drop them in the comments below. And of course, if you'd like to watch more of these videos, please do subscribe to our channel. That will give us the necessary support to keep these videos coming. So the first tree that we are actually going to discuss today is something a viewer of ours actually contributed. And I'm very, very happy to discuss this tree because it is also found in the Pench Tiger Reserve. So our first tree of the day is actually Amaltas or the golden shower tree or as it is known in Latin, Cassia fistula. Now this is a very interesting tree, in fact a very popular ornamental tree. So it's not that it's just actually restricted to the jungle, you will often see this along the street sides, along the road sides in many parts of India because it looks so beautiful with those golden vines of beautiful flowers that are draped all over the tree. Amaltas is also the state flower of Kerala but apart from its popularity it is also natively found in our Indian jungles, found both in dry deciduous as well as moist deciduous forests. In fact, it is so adaptable, you will see it in varying landscapes and varying habitats. Sometimes you'll see it on hilltops, sometimes you'll see it in the thick of the forest, sometimes you'll see it in areas which appear quite dry and rocky. But here's the interesting part, this tree still does very very well in all of those areas. Now, Amaltas would be very easily recognizable when those flowers are out, but those flowers are not always out during the entire year. So you will need those four characters as always to identify the tree. The leaf, the bark, the flower and the fruit. Now, Amaltas as a tree is rarely seen leafless. In fact, it sheds its leaves in the months of February, March because of course it's a deciduous tree. And it then goes into new leaves somewhere in the month of April. So the period is very, very short. During most of this time, you will see that the leaves are those smooth, green, pointy uh, leaves which are in pairs. Uh, and you'll also sometimes see them in this brownish red, coppery red color as well. Uh, and that happens when the leaves are actually new. Bark is not the most reliable feature that you can use to identify this tree because it tends to be a little variable. It may be smooth, pale gray, or it may be also with dark scabs on it. It. But of course, the most identifiable characteristic of this tree is of course its flowers. And well, if you see an Amaltas flush, you can't really miss it, even if you are a little bit of a distance away. And it is a truly gorgeous vision to see these beautiful golden flowers hanging like vines. Interestingly, it happens during two points of the year, during the months of April and May, as well as during the monsoons as well. Uh, and you are a lucky person if you actually see this vision because it's truly satisfying. Interestingly though, the fertilization of the fruit takes quite a bit of time. It may almost be a year after those flowers come out that the fruit fertilizes. Uh, and interestingly, the seed dispersal is happening through a very natural rhythm because the fruits, which are these long, brown dark pods as well basically fall on the ground and the pulp is really really liked by a lot of animals so monkeys jackals uh, all of these animals may actually feed on them and that's how the seed dispersal takes place now there have been a variety of applications that uh, Amaltas has also been used for in our culture. Uh, there are certain tanning dyes that are derived from its bark. Uh, much like hair, it also has a very tough hardwood which is used for agricultural implements. And interestingly in Ayurveda, it has a very interesting name known as Aragvad, which basically means disease killer. And yes, there have been certain properties to show that it acts as a laxative, but you have to be very, very careful because much like other Kasyas as well, there are many parts of this tree which are also toxic. Well, that's about the popular Amaltas. Now let's go on to our next tree, Anogesis latifolia or Dhavda. Now this tree has quite a distinctive structure. Uh, 
you'll actually see the trunk going up and up and up and up and there are no branches whatsoever and then suddenly when the tree reaches a height of approximately 9 to 10 meters that's just when you actually see the branches really sprouting out so uh, that has actually led to an interesting analogy in Pradeep Krishan's book uh, where he mentions this as gangly cadets with uh, very short haircuts and that's a very interesting analogy to actually remember these trees by now this particular tree is not as adaptable as some of the other species that we've discussed and it really only grows well in areas where there is going to be a good amount of organic matter in the soil, soil which will be able to hold the water and it doesn't get drained off too fast. Now coming to the leaves of this particular tree, well the clue is in the tree's name. Anogesis latifolia. Latifolia basically meaning broad leaved. Yep, that's how the leaves basically are broad. Uh, they may or may not have a pointy tip, but they are alternately paired uh, and they may sometimes be green or they may also be this coppery red color, especially during the dry season. Much like other trees as well that we've discussed, it's a deciduous tree, which means it basically sheds its leaves and that's usually around February. Uh, and then the new leaves coming tends to be a little bit variable depending on local conditions but it is before usually the monsoon the bark of this tree also tends to be a little bit variable uh, and it may be this pale gray white or having a flaky structure the flowers of this tree tend to be quite different as well uh, there are these two to five flowers small flowers bunched together uh, that may be either green or purplish pink in color and you have these wires coming out which are actually the stamens uh, which is the male reproductive part of the flower and it's quite it looks quite wiry as well so that's another way to actually identify the flower flower and the fruit actually looks like a form of the flower as well as if it has fused. It's a very curious looking fruit isn't it? You can remember this particular fruit by its pointy tips uh, and that reddish brown color is actually what you'll see during the dry season when you see this tree from a distance that's the color the color of these fruits. This particular tree has actually found to have a very high amount of gallotannin so that's a type of molecule which makes it very very viable to be used as a fuel wood as well as for tanning applications. This particular tree also has a connection with silk. Now if you recall how silk is actually made you actually take those cocoons of those caterpillars and then you boil them and that's how you derive silk right uh, well this is the food plant of a particular variety of those moths uh, specifically the south indian small tussor which is a type of tussar silk moth so this is an important tree with that application as well another important product that is actually derived from this tree is gum ghati uh, and this tree doesn't usually have to be you know cut or anything like that the actually the resin often oozes out naturally uh, and that particular resin is now used in a variety of different applications in the industry ranging from foods uh, beverages and even in drugs as a binding agent i'm considering if we should cover one more tree all right let's do one more so let's look at salai or boswellia serrata also known as the incense tree now salai might be among the toughest trees that you'll actually come to know because i've seen salai in very rocky plateaus where there's not a lot of other vegetation uh, this tree also has shown to be resistance to forest fires uh, resistance to uh, excessive browsing by herbivores so this is a tree which is really really toughened up and hardened to meet those poor conditions in which other trees may not be able to survive because of this toughness it has actually been favored for afforestation practices as well basically areas which have degraded over time this particular species is planted to kind of renew that habit habitat now the leaves of these trees are quite distinctive you have leaflets uh, something we discussed before but here there is just one level of differentiation so you have these 14 to 15 pairs of leaflets and then one single leaflet right at the end as well without a pair uh, also you will see that at the margins or the border of these particular leaves there are these rounded sort of teeth or serrations that are also there now because this is a tree which has adapted to hardy conditions again as an energy conservation strategy this particular tree goes leafless for quite a while so it may shed its leaves as early as December or January and then you'll see this tree in new leaf perhaps right uh, towards the beginning of mid of June. Uh, interestingly the bark again is not reliable though you may actually see it having a pe peeling papery structure as well. Uh, the flowers again look a little different they are actually growing growing 
or like these bunches of white or pale pink flowers along a big pink hairy stalk as well uh, so you see this uh, particular stalk actually come up and see be able to see it at a distance uh, the fruits of this particular tree also go through a transition phase uh, they first start out uh, like uh, as Pradeep Krishan puts it he puts it like a, in the shape of a bladder and then the color actually goes from green to pink and to finally pale brown the flowering of this tree basically takes place during the months of February to March uh, while the fruit actually comes out during the months of April to May. Uh, the interesting thing that you'll remember about this tree was something I mentioned a little while earlier about it being the incense tree. And yes, there's a resin called Salai Google which is derived from this tree which is used for the manufacturing of incense sticks as well. Uh, and of course, incense sticks are very popular in Indian homes as well for you know adding a fragrance to our homes and during a variety of really religious functions as well but interestingly this particular resin also has an application in the medical field and it has been in fact scientifically validated to also show some efficacy towards the treatment of osteoarthritis of the knee so basically this has been known to be used in treatment of joints uh, that are actually there in the knee as well uh, but that's about the commercial bit of this tree you'll be happy to know that India is also a proud host to this particular tree in fact it is an endemic species that is actually found here in the Indian subcontinent. Well, that's it. So that's the three trees that we also additionally covered, which are also found in the Pench Tiger Reserve. Perhaps when you actually go on safari the next time, you can actually see these trees and point them out and maybe share that particular information which we just discussed with your family and with your friends. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, in case you have any questions, any comments or even any corrections, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. And once again, to have your support, please do subscribe to our channel as well, guys. Take care.